Revelation Unraveled, Part 6, The Trinitarian Nature of God and His Universe. Before studying the Apocalypse, Revelation, it's important that we understand the three divine persons in one God, who we know as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and how that truth is expressed in the threefold or Trinitarian nature of the universe. As every student learns, there are three states of matter, three primary colors, three primary shapes, etc. It will be amazing to discover how the numerous trinities in nature express the individual character of each person of the Godhead. It's as if God were a great artist who signed his name on his masterpiece in triplicate. Clues to the character of each person in the Trinity may be found in their family names. God the Father expresses strength or stability, just like the Father in a family. His son, Jesus, like any youth, expresses vitality. And lastly, the Holy Spirit represents the mother in a family, and therefore the mystery of the feminine. This does not mean that the Holy Spirit himself is feminine, but rather he is the Lord of procreation, the Lord and the giver of life. The universe itself, in its entirety, most scientists agree, consists of the triad, time, space, and matter. I think it's appropriate that we consider each of these very different concepts as a reflection of each of the three divine persons. For example, of the three, matter is the most solid and thus represents the strength and stability of God the Father. Time can be measured as motion and therefore represents the youthful nature of God the Son. Finally, the mystery of space reflects the feminine mystery of God, the Holy Spirit. Thus, like the three persons of the Trinity, the three structural divisions of the universe are completely unique, while at the same time totally unified. Like many other trinities in nature, the three divides of the universe can be further broken down into additional trinities. Time consists of past, present, and future. Space is expressed as horizontal, length, vertical, width, and front to back, depth. The three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. If we take a closer look at each of these sub-trinities, like the parts of the universe they are derived from, they very accurately reflect the individual natures of the divine trinity. Regarding the universal phenomenon of time, the future is certainly the most mysterious and is easily understood as a reflection of the Holy Spirit. The present is the active aspect of time and expresses the energy and vitality of God the Son. Since the past is a known quantity, it reflects the stable nature of God the Father. Thus, although time itself, as one of the Trinitarian aspects of the universe, reflects primarily the Son, when broken down into its three parts, it reflects all three persons of the Godhead. The same kind of analysis can be applied to space. Horizontality expresses calmness, strength, and serenity, and therefore best reflects the Father. Verticality is a sign of activity, the lightning strike between heaven and earth, and thus reveals to us the sun. The front-to-back dimension of space is mysterious, and therefore of the Holy Spirit, because it is actually hidden from view and cannot be seen. In similar comparisons, matter can be solid, like the Father, in motion or liquid, like the Son, 
or an unseen and mysterious gas like the Holy Spirit. These three states of matter are also found in the three basic environments of our planet, land, sea, and air. Even the symbols that we associate with each person of the Trinity, the fish for Jesus, the dove for the Holy Spirit, and to a lesser degree the ox for God the Father, are derived from their individual relationship with the three states of matter. Later on in our study of the Apocalypse, we will find a corresponding unholy trinity of Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. Other important trinities which are inherent in the structure of the universe include the three primary colors and the three primary shapes. All the myriad shades of pigment available to an artist can be mixed from just three colors, red, blue, and yellow. Red, being the most vibrant and exciting of colors, bears the imprint of God the Sun. Since blue is always considered cool, calm, and collected, how better to describe God the Father? Yellow, like the gaseous flame of a candle, provokes an image of the Holy Spirit. One of the attractions of burning a candle to symbolize prayer is because the three parts thereof, the cool, solid wax, the melted liquid, and the hot flame, combine to invoke the Trinity. Just as all colors can be obtained from red, blue, and yellow, all forms in the universe can be derived from just three primary shapes, square, circle, and triangle. The square, clearly the most solid of these forms, reflects the Father. Because the line of a circle has no beginning or end, a circle reveals the Spirit, as it is the most feminine and mysterious. The triangle also exhibits solidity, but not as much as a square, especially if it is depicted resting on one of its points and therefore signifies the more active qualities of the sun. As we are discovering, it should not be surprising that the three primary shapes can also be further broken down into trinities. For example, there are three types of triangles, equilateral, scalene, and isosceles. Because all sides of an equilateral triangle are the same size, that sameness reflects stability, and thus God the Father. Since all sides of a scalene triangle are different lengths, that variety reflects vitality, and thus God the Son. The isosceles triangle is quite unusual, because the two equal sides represent that which God the Father and Son have in common their masculine traits, while the third length is different because it reflects the more feminine nature of God the Holy Spirit. The three types of circular forms are the circle, ellipse, and heart. The circle, being the more basic and regular of these shapes, reflects the Father. Tilting a circle causes it to become more obscure more mysterious and more feminine in appearance, and the resulting ellipse is thus more like the Holy Spirit. If you tilt and also bend a circle in half, the result is a heart shape. It's not too far afield that a heart shape should represent Jesus. When a priest breaks in half the consecrated host, circle, the symbolism of sacrifice and a broken heart is complete. We read in Luke 24:13 that several disciples did not recognize the risen Jesus until the breaking of the bread. Like the bread and the heart, Jesus was broken on the cross. <laughs>